welcome to church. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome to church. This is Christ, it's a by grace of Christ and Life Mission, Ibadan, Nigeria. Let us pray. Our Father be glorified in Jesus' name. I ask that you touch us, you transform us, you change us to your will, to your way in Jesus' name. Help us through in the name of Jesus. And every man, every woman, everyone that faces, that is facing one challenge or the other, step into such in Jesus' name. Have your way in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. I have a very special message. The continuation of the last one is Handling challenges in marriage and ministry. Handling challenges in marriage and ministry. How can you handle challenges in your marriage? How can you handle challenges in your ministry? You are called to the two. God has called you to your marriage. God has also called you to his work. How can you manage the two together? How can the two not affect each other? How can God be happy that you have a good home? Or uh, how can also God be happy that, yes, your ministry is flourishing, is moving forward, is going on. It is the will of God that you must have a home, a good home, enviable home, home that God is the head, home that knows God. The father is a good father. The mother is a good mother. The children are good children in the home. And at the same time, God's assignment in your hand, how can you combine them together? God's assignment is you can't, you can't run away from it. You must have God. You must follow the way of God. Joshua said, like I said the other time, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is, he didn't exempt his house. He didn't exempt himself. He said they will serve the Lord. It's very important. It's very important. And that's the reason. How do you arrange your home and your ministry? How do you arrange your life, your home, and your ministry? Handling challenges in the home. Look at the order of God. The order of God is this. That God first, that's number one. Number two, the home. Number three, the ministry. That's the order of God. God, home, ministry. It's very important. It is not home, God, ministry. It is not ministry, God, home. It is God, home, ministry. God, the creator of heaven and earth. God, in which you are going to report yourself to. God that has called you to, to life and to ministry, to home. That's number one. Number two is the home. You take care of the home. Number three, it is the ministry. How do you handle the two together? You know the Lord. Thank God for that. You serve the Lord. Thank God for that. But how do you arrange them? Is God first in your life? Or ministry first, God should be the first. Then ministry will follow. And then, then marriage will follow. Then ministry will be the last one. When your home is okay, your ministry will enjoy the goodness of the home. And that's the reason you don't allow anything to injure your home, your ministry. And then follow the line, the orderliness of God. God, home, ministry. It's important. Let's look at some things in the word of God. And that is Luke chapter 1, verses, from verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia, and his wife was the daughters of, was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Verse 6. And they were both righteous. The two of them were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Let me talk on that briefly. Now, they were both righteous. That is, they lived right. They walked in the way of God. They knew the Lord. The husband knew the Lord. The wife knew the Lord. Now, they knew the Lord. They were both righteous. 
and walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the law blameless. You cannot be able to fault them. You cannot be able to fault their life because they were blameless. They were walking right. They knew the Lord. They served the Lord. Look at some things there. And they had no child. So you can, you can marry and you face some challenges. When you marry, you can, there's no, marriage, no challenge-free marriage. No challenge-free marriage. Every marriage has its own challenges. And that's the reason. He said, and they had no child. They, though they were righteous, they were holy, they were serving the Lord wholeheartedly, the husband, the wife. The home served the Lord. Like Joshua said, I and my family will serve the, the Lord. We will not serve idols. They served the Lord, and they had no child. Because that Elizabeth was barren. Did you see that? And they both were now well stricken in years. You could have long-term challenges, not yet solved. But it's not saying you should not do your ministry. It's not saying you should neglect the work of God. It's not saying you should back out from God's work. And it's not saying you should back out from the marriage too. It's not saying that. They were both righteous, but they had no child. Elizabeth was burning, and they were well stricken in years, in age. Well stricken in age. Look at verse, uh, verse 7, verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, though they had problems, but Zechariah was executed the God's work, was going on with God's work. He did it back out, and according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. You are asked to come and lead prayers. Have you neglected that? You are given assignment in the work of God. Have you neglected that? You have been told by God that God is calling you to a certain ministry in life. Do you say, well, I don't need to go. If you don't give me child or children, I will not do the work of God. Challenges in the home. Challenges to home. There are challenges in ministry too. But let me talk on the challenges to the home a bit. And that is, challenges could be joblessness. No job. The husband has no job. Or the wife has no job. Or the two of them have no job at all. How do you handle that? You need to go and pray. It could happen. You may be gravely employed before, but now there's no job. Is he saying you will not serve God? You will not even come to church? Is he saying you will not do your ministry? Is he saying you will not join the departments? Is he saying God has sent you to prison to go, to go and evangelize them? Will you say because there's no job, you will not do that? God is calling us. It could be poverty, no money. No money. It's a common disease. No money. But God is going to change it. Your ministry will, will flourish. Your money will flourish. There will be money. It could be, it could be your childlessness, I said. It could be incompatibility. You are not, you don't understand yourself. Go and work on yourself. Go and pray to God. And God is able to step into it and bless your life. It could be sickness. Anybody can fall sick at any time, at any age. If you are sick, will you neglect your ministry? If you are sick, will you neglect your home? If you are sick, what are you going to do? Call cry out to God. He's able to heal you. It could be you have a nagging wife. Yes, he's born, she's born again. Or uh, nagging husband. He's born again. Yet yeah, the flesh is still working occasionally and you will push him to go contrary to you. So you need to really go to God and uh, face the challenges. It could be where well, somebody who had not been drinking before now started drinking. What is the problem? If you neglect your home, your life, and your ministry, you will be in problem. Or you'll be in trouble. It could be because of certain tradition, certain culture, or you have miscarriage, you have accommodation problem. Accommodation problem. What are you going to do? Tell it to God. Tell each of your problems to God. Do all you need to do physically, spiritually, to really solve your problem together with your spouse, with your children too. And you come and see how God will begin to help you. Now, the challenges in ministry could be so much. Let me mention them. This challenge in ministry could be where no accommodation for your ministry. You have, you were in a place before, but now you have been thrown out. You start having to rust. But God solved this. No accommodation. Yes, God will still provide accommodation. Ministerial neglect, neglect, and no support. Nobody is supporting your ministry. It's a challenge. It's a problem in the ministry. It's a problem in God's work. Yes, you have financial challenges. Yes, everybody, you, so many people are facing that too. But they still endure, and they overcame. And you are going to endure, and you are going to overcome. 
in the name of Jesus, no helper, no equipment. You are still struggling to get equipment. Well, it's just a face. That face will go. Know it. Say it. It's a face. It's a face. Yes, it will go. You will soon begin to have more than enough equipment and even give it to others because God is going to step into your ministry. Well, where so the calamities happening in the, in the ministry or uh, uh, evil occurrence happening, what are you going to do concerning that? You tell it to God. You cry to God. You go to step into it. God will give you wisdom to handle troubles, traumas, calamities in the church or in the ministry. Yes, good people leaving you because of one reason or the other. It's a challenge in the ministry. You know that? It's a, it's a big challenge. You have trained them. You have worked on them. And they just left. And you, without any offense, they just left. What are you going to do? It's a challenge in ministry. Will you because of that? Because good people have left and you are no more doing the work of God again. Or because the sponsor of the, of the ministry has left and you will pack out of your, of your husband's house. No. No, you can't do that. Endure. There's, there's, there's no free world where there's no problem. Anyone in this world will face one challenge or the other. We are in the world. We are not yet in heaven. But maintain your integrity. Maintain your standing before the Lord. Let your ministry know and let your wife or your home know that, yes, this is for God. The, that God rules in the affairs of this home. God rules in the affairs of this ministry. And when you do that, you will be able to see uh, spiritual challenges. Your spouse is lukewarm. It's cold. And the people in the church, they are cold. Then revive them. Pray to God to revive them. Teach them the way of God. And you come and see what God will begin to do. God is having something against you. It's a challenge in ministry. Look at the church in Ephesus. What happened to them? They were very strong. They were very good. But God said, I have something against you. You have left your first love. That's a serious matter. It's a challenge in ministry. Which means, go back to your first love. And the church of Sardis, you say, you are, well, you are alive, but you are dead. It is a challenge. That is, he requires that you come back to him. What of the Laodicean church? He said, God saw them. You are neither cold nor hot, but you are lukewarm. That's a serious challenge. You are, neither cold, you are not cold. You are not hot. You are in between. It's a challenge in ministry. How can you do it? How can you combine this together? Now, the life of Eli is a very serious life which I want us to check and study very briefly for just one, four, four minutes or three minutes. You look at the life of Eli. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial, and they knew not the Lord. The sons of, of Eli. Now, Eli was a man of God. The family knew the Lord, but the children decided not to walk in the way of God. You as a child in this family, don't decide to walk wrongly. Better come back to God. Don't spoil your father's ministry or your mother's ministry. Don't spoil your own ministry. God has future for you. You are going to a place. You must do something for the Lord. You must serve the living God. God is saying to you, you are my servant. You are my weapons of war. You are his own. You should be a honorable person. The sons of Eli, he said, they were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. If they, if they didn't know the Lord, then they would misbehave. They work against their fathers and their parents' ministry. Now, let me tell you some things about this, uh, this prophet Eli uh, ministry uh, work. Now, God even warned him that he will destroy them one day. And uh, if they don't change, if they don't repent, he is going to work them away. And actually, that happened. Now, Take note of these four things in Eli's ministry and home. Number one, he was very anointed. Eli was very, very anointed. Today said that he canceled barrenness of several years in, in the life of Hannah. He was highly anointed just at a word. Barrenness was canceled in the life of Hannah. So Eli has a very big and wonderful ministry, healing ministry, miracle working ministry, science and wonders ministry. And we could see that concerning Eli. Number two, his calling and ministry was well known, well known, well known all over. In the whole nation, they knew the ministry of, of, of Eli and they referenced that ministry. It was accepted to people, not only that, to the nation of Israel. Number three, his two sons, by the word of God, were called the sons of Belia. That is, the people that God will slay. God said that in his word. He said, people that God will slay. 
people that God will stray. That is the sons of Eli. And point number four is they were violent and forceful. The children were violent and forceful. Hey, daddy, you have to really pray for these are children. Mommy, you have to pray for children. Even your children are born. That God will not make God not allow, will not allow them to become sons of Belial. It's important. I'm not talking to pastors alone. I'm not talking to prophets alone or apostles alone. We, this message is coming to everyone. Since you know the Lord, and since you want to serve the Lord, you have a ministry. You have something to do for the Lord. God is just calling us. We should know how to really uh, handle our home and our ministry. Very important. Number, number five. Now, it was recorded against them. That is, the, the sons of Eli. And against their parents. Bible says in uh, 1 Samuel 2, 13, he said, he knew about their sins. That is, Eli knew about the sins of his children. He, he was aware of their misbehaviors. He was aware of their obstinacy. He was aware that they were children of Belial. He was aware that they, they never obeyed instruction. He was aware that these children were so terrible. Look at the word of God concerning them. He was aware of their sin, that they were vile, vile children. They were filled with sons, and the father did not refrain them. That touched my heart. He said, the word of God says, the father knew, the mother knew, but he did not refrain them. He did not refrain them. Shout on these children. Cry to God on them. Call them to, 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 to understanding. Call them to, to yield to the Lord. Pray for them. He said he knew them and did not refrain them, did not correct them, did not stop them. To refrain means stopping people from doing what they were doing. He said he did not refrain them. What have you not refrained from? What have you done? Do, will you keep silent on those children? Will you keep silent on your wife or your husband? Would you cry to God concerning them that God should touch their hearts, your ministry, your home? I said the other God is God first. The second one is the home. The third one is the ministry. So you must handle the three together. How? Know the Lord completely. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Do like Joshua. Serve the Lord. Number two, take care of your home. Don't be like prophet Eli. He was anointed, yet he knew the sins of his children. And he didn't refrain them. He just let them on their own. And they told him, these children were this, they are doing that and do that. And they said, Oh, you, Hophni, Phineas, I heard what you are doing. It is not good. Eh? Who we entreat for you? If you go contrary to God, he, he, that's not refraining. Refraining means you are stand or you stand on your feet concerning them. So that they can turn to God. When they, they see punishment, when they see that you, are, you, are, you, you, you can report them to their father, that means to God, the creator, then they will be able to change. It's didn't refrain them. You have to refrain them. You have to talk to them. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. And it's important. It's important. May God not, may God not rise against your home. May God not rise against your ministry. May you not be exchanged. You know what happened to, 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 to Eli? God said it will change the, his life, his ministry. He will hand over his ministry to other people, to a better person, which he did. God did that. God did that. You will not lose your ministry. You will not lose your home. Very, very important. And what you do? Four things. Number one, know the Lord completely and serve him. Number two, look at how your home will be better than before and work on your home. Work on your life first. Work on your spouse, work on your children, how they become better. And work on your ministry, how they can be useful in the ministry too. Your wife can be useful in your ministry. Your husband can be used in your ministry. And it's important. And the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. I want us to offer just three major prayer points. Number one, every problem the devil has brought to my ministry be uprooted today. Prayer in the name of Jesus. That my ministry will not collapse. That my ministry will not be ruined. In the name of Jesus, pray the same prayer for your, for your home, that there are challenges in our home. Father, step into it. Step into the finance of our home. Step into the finance of the ministry. Lord, step into our finance. In the name of Jesus, raise up help for us. Raise up help for us. 
Raise up hell for us. Raise up hell for us. In the name of Jesus, pray now that that barrenness of that person in the ministry, the Lord will change it immediately, like he changed that of Anna. In the name of Jesus, can you tell God, use me for your glory. Anoint me to serve you. Anoint me to be a blessing to so many lives, so many homes, and to the ministry God has committed to my hands. Let me not fail you, O oh God. Help me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this message. How to face challenges in our home, in our ministry, how to really handle the ministry, how God will be happy with us. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit will help us. In the name of Jesus, it is well with us. In the name of Jesus, the prayers offered, they are answered in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for sound health. I pray for peace in your home. I pray for financial breakthrough in your home. I pray for holiness, righteousness in your home. I also pray for the ministry that God will raise up sponsors, financiers into your ministry in the name of Jesus. And it is well. We will make it to heaven. In Jesus' name, I pray. You can, you, can, you can share with us what God has done. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.